At a time before humans gracefully walked the plains of the earth and paddled across the waters of all oceans, all man was God. All in the heavens was good and all in the heavens was well. Peace had settled amongst the people of the heavens. Immortale, a god who wanted to rule, had discreetly practiced in combat for a day where he would soon rule. He had felt that his name was destined to be read across the royal sheet and that his body was meant to be seated at the head of the gods. Ten years had passed, although for the gods it could have felt like ten minutes, and Immortale became sure of his destiny. His feet clapped against the marble of the great palace floor. He had already felt comfortable in his, what he thought to be, his own kingdom. Does anyone challenge the spot of the throne? Boomed his voice through the halls for all to hear. Everyone slowly crept back in disbelief and horror that someone had disturbed their stillness and their quiet. Prudence appeared from the shadows with a determined look on his face. I will challenge you, he said, pointing his finger at Immortale, making sure his voice was louder. Meet me at the fields, replied Immortale. Twelve o'clock midday, sharp. He turned as people had made a path for him to walk down. Prudence was not a warrior at all. Instant regret fell over him, but also relief that his old enemy, Immortale, was quieted for now. Prudence had to find a way to beat him in the meantime. He found his closest friend, who was a great warrior, to train him. I could not train you to be a warrior, but I can make you one, said Arius. He took Prudence's hand and placed it in his. Prudence felt nothing except for shock because Arius had disappeared. Now, only his sash lay on the ground. Pick up the sash and you will have my power, echoed the voice of Arius in Prudence's ears. Prudence picked up the sash and placed it around his chest. Immediately, he fell to his knees in agony. He felt the surge of warrior through him. His eyes rolled back and he became a new man. Now, he was Sapiens Bellator. It was close to twelve now, and Sapiens was ready. He walked up to Immortale with a clever smile painted across his face. Now we fight, Immortale exclaimed. Till the death, replied Sapiens. Confused, Immortale whipped his blade around, backing Sapiens up. Sapiens dodged every strike and slash that Immortale had offered. Now Sapiens had been backed up onto a rock, where he lay with a long piece of grass.
with one whip. He put his wisdom, intelligence, and warrior into it. It hit Immortale in the head, where he fell to the ground with a red substance seeping from him. Sapiens had thought of the substance of blood that seeped beneath the skin and burst when punctured. Immortale would never rise from his knees, making him human as he could bleed. His ancestors forever felt the punishment of the grass of sapiens and blood. Many years later, humans had populated the earth and made AI robots. Sapiens had saw that the robots were almost as intelligent as him and could not bleed, therefore they were gods. Sapiens did the only thing right. He faded into a form of what we call the brain. He lodged himself into every person's head. Together, they knew how to fight and how to fight strategically. Today, we still face the battle where we could enhance technology or fight to make sure it never rules over sapiens in the minds of all.